one of the most popular tools to backup and restore Kubernetes clusters is Valero. As you know that Kubernetes mean hemsman or pilot of the ship and most of the tools and utilities in Kubernetes are named after some of the seafaring tools, utilities or concepts. Similarly, Valero, which is a backup and restore tool for Kubernetes means sailboat. In this video, we are going to see as how to install Valero on AWS EKS. AWS EKS is a managed Kubernetes service from AWS. I already have a running cluster in AWS EKS. Let me quickly show you what, what, um, what is currently in that cluster. I'm just checking the namespaces with kubectl and as you can see, it's pretty brand new cluster. Nothing is really installed on it. So what we are going to do, we are going to install Valero in a separate namespace with, um, with the name Valero, of course. And one more requirement with Valero is to have an S3 bucket already installed or configured or created, which I already have in this account of AWS because Valero uses S3 bucket to put all of the backups from the Kubernetes. Now, before we begin, let's set up some of the environment variables to make operating and installing this Valero easy. So let me set these environment variables and don't worry if you no need to copy paste this because I'm going to put this uh, either on my blog or in my GitHub repository with the command and step-by-step -step instruction. So as you can see, what I'm doing here is the first export, I'm just setting the existing S3 bucket where Valero will be placing all the backups. Then I'm setting the region. I'm in Sydney region, which is AP Southeast 2. Name of my cluster is sample. Then in the account, I'm putting in my account ID from AWS. I'm setting primary context and then updating the cube config file with this primary context alias, but it will be easier to uh, move there. Now, let me clear the screen. And if you see the current context, which you can do with kubectl config current context, which is primary, which is my existing cluster. So all good. Now, Valero performs a number of API calls to resources in EC2 and S3 to perform snapshots and save the backup to S3, as I just mentioned. So we need to have some IAM policy to grant Valero the permission so that it could access the S3 bucket. Let me create a well, uh, IAM policy file first. And again, I'll be putting it in my GitHub repo. This is a big policy file. It has created it. Now, if you just look at it, it is granting some EC2 related uh, permissions on all resources, some S3 related and on the bucket. And this dollar is my environment variable where I'm specifying the name of the bucket. Once that's done, let's use AWS CLI command to create the policy. I'm just using AWS IAM create policy here. Okay, I think there is, because I'm using git bash so sometimes it doesn't recognize some of the flashes. So I'm just putting it on the same command. Let me clear the screen. So instead of putting it in separate line, I'm putting it in one line. And I'm using the same Valero policy JSON file. Okay, so it means it's duplicate names are not allowed. So that is fine, it already exists. Uh, which is fine. So, but if I'm I'm sure in your environment it won't be it, it won't be there. So feel free to create it. Now, policy is done. Now let's create a service account. And the best practice for providing AWS policies to applications running within the EKS cluster is to use IAM roles for service accounts or IRSA as it is called in short. EKS CTL provide an easy way to create the required IAM role and scope the trust relationship to the Valero service account. And let me create it. So as you can see, I'm creating the service account. I'm specifying my cluster name 
and the name of elder server namespace and then a role name which we created uh, earlier a role only and also the policy so enter and it should create our service account and it uses cloud formation for that which is okay okay now let's wait for it to finish and once that's done what we are going to do we are going to install the value using the hem chart i'm just waiting for it to finish it takes some time it takes a minute or two and sometime it's a bit quicker uh, because on the back end what it is doing is it is calling the ekstl apis and then it says that it was unable to do it which is so let's see what happened there it says a service account that exists in kubernetes will be excluded and then okay so i think it already exists so which is fine in this case i'm moving on to the next one so let me clear and i'm adding the hem repository for velro So it again says it already exists because I already um, went through this command once, so which is fine. You just uh, if in in your environment it will if it doesn't exist it will create it. Now we need to run the ham chart, but before we do that we need some values file. And again these are just some of the values about bucket, about region, and the Velro plugin. The values file is done. There is another values recovery file which we need to create. For our well row. Again, same thing with bucket and region. Now, once that's done, we need to actually install the hem chart. Let me clear the screen and run it here. So, as you can see, this is where we are installing the well row in the namespace well row. And I'm, we are also specifying if namespace doesn't exist, then create it, which it, it is doing. And this is a values file which we just created above. And this takes some time, bit of a time. So let's give it a minute and uh, let me pause the video and I'll come back when it's done. Okay, so it came back and as you can see, my value deployment is done and I also described the pod in there and it seems to be working. Now, if I go above and show you a bit of a output from my ham chart, so as you can see, it's the status is deployed there. And now, once this deployment is ready and running, then we can go ahead and take the backup and also restore it, which I will be showing in showing you in the next video. So now, as you can see, the well row is both up and running, which is good. Okay, I hope this was useful. And if you have any comments or feedback, please put them in the comments. Thank you.